Sharing my screen now. So uh, this is the, I think we'll go ahead and start. If people come late, they'll join in in the middle. Um, this is the Planetarium Educators Workshop, part three. Um, and it's based on, based on Planetarium Educators Workshop Guide, which can be found on this website. Um, uh, in fact, let me copy the URL of that into the, into the chat. Uh, actually, where is the chat? Right there. So uh, this is this is the URL where <clears throat> where you can find the Planetarium Educators Workshop. Um, and the where uh, where it is is uh, right here, and you can view it as a PDF or a web page. Uh, so I'm going to look at the web page, Planetarium Educators Workshop. And uh, actually, let me copy that into the into the chat too. That's um, that's the name of the module we're going to be doing. Um, okay, so I'm just scroll. I'm just scrolling it from the top of the Planetary Educators Workshop Guide. Um, that's the copyright page and here's a table of contents. So in the past, we've done uh, the communication workshop that's, uh, that's recorded and archived. Um, in fact, those of you who were who here, John and John and John, you may recall that that had uh, difficulties that I didn't expect actually. And, uh, we may do that one again because I thought of some better ways to do the communication work. And then we also did module two, a framework for examining planetarium programs. Um, but today we're going to focus on organizational patterns, which is module three. Okay. So uh, what we're going to be going for here is uh, let's see here. There, I have it on the on the, uh, on the slide here. Um, we're going to be looking at various ways to uh, organize audience participation or activities in the planetarium. Okay, and these are these are ones that were originally included in the planetarium educators workshop. Uh, there may be new ones that you can think of uh, that are slight. Some of the new ones may be variations of these. They may, they may fit into these categories or not. And each of these techniques have advantages and disadvantages. So that's kind of what we're going to be looking at today and looking at some examples uh, to see what, what types of activities or what activities fall into these different categories. Um, um, thinking of different examples. Uh, this, this table we'll be using, but uh, rather than in a face-to-face -face workshop where we'd have paper and pencil, we're going to be using the chat. So uh, you don't have to download the table as a PDF. It is available there, but we're just going to use the chat when needed. Um, uh, so let's just start right in with the first organization pattern, which is called didactic. And this is basically your classic uh, sage on the stage, if you will. It's called sage on the stage, where the presenter is giving a, a lecture to the group. Um, that can be a recorded thing too. Okay. Um, so uh, this is, this is something that a lot of people in the uh, uh, in the uh, audience participation or interactive world 
frown on, but I would remind anybody that rather than frown on it, you have to realize that this is a, a valid way of going about doing a part of a program, even a part of an activity. You have to be doing a lecture like what I'm doing right now in order to explain what's what's coming up or how people can participate. Um, so speaking of participation, if you all will um, open up on your computer a uh, text file or a Word document or something like I have here, and uh, I'm going to just copy this, uh, this word into the chat. And if you will, think of ways that, um, let's see, did it copy into the chat? I don't think it did. Let me do that again. Try that again. Uh, so that's the topic we're doing now. And if you think of advantages or disadvantages, just write them down. You can either type them directly into the chat or use a, uh, a Word document or some text file to put your thoughts down and then type that into the chat. And that way we have a record kind of like, kind of like a table that I, that I showed above here, that table, but it will just be recorded in the chat for this workshop, online workshop technique. just having a quiet time if people are typing go ahead and paste it into the um, into the chat when you're ready I've come up with a couple so far it's an advantage is that it's easy to do a disadvantage is that there are no interactions with the audience really Okay, 
So, uh, John, that's a good list. Uh, I, I am muted there. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, yeah. I guess for the first part, harder to tailor to audiences, activities and discussions, the audience enters at its own level. Um, and the lecture, you get to choose the level and it might be right for some and less right for others. Ah, yeah, so that's a disadvantage. Yeah, I started with disadvantages. Okay. I put less engaging depending. If you've got an expert with stories and information, it could be very engaging. Yeah, that's for sure. Um, so under advantages, I put sharing expertise and I should add experiences and a didactic experience can spark questions as well as any other. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So, um, and John Elbert, you said uh, anyone can run a pre-recorded program. Now you've listed that as a disadvantage. Well, I think that uh, I mean, if you had if, if you had a very engaging storyteller uh, that 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 was very good at telling stories uh, or engaging the audience with dialogue, then um, that would be an advantage. But if you had a you know a, a pre-recorded show that was about to be shown, I'm just you don't need that that uh, specialized storyteller to uh, you know, engage the audience. So uh, I don't. I guess it could be an advantage, but I I always see um, you know the ticket taker pressing the play button as a disadvantage. Mm. Okay. Uh, somebody just somebody new just came in. Uh, Benjamin, is that Benjamin Mendelson? Yeah, I'm audio only. You're audio only. Okay. Well, we've just to get you caught up. We're we're doing module three of the Planetarium Educators Workshop Guide, and we've just put down some ideas about the didactic organization, which is basically a lecture format, and come up with advantages and disadvantages. I won't go through all the details. Uh, because I don't want to bore everybody else. We can, we can forge right ahead to the next organization path, unless somebody has something else to say about the didactic uh, approach. Well, the, the next uh, one is the small group task organization. Okay, this is one where you break the audience up into small groups. And the small groups can be any any size, really. Uh, um, two is a convenient size in some cases. Three works pretty well a lot of times. But now if you get too large a group, uh, it probably doesn't work as well. So, so um, when this happens, there's a there are some suggestions about how to make it work well down here. Uh, you have to make sure that their task that they're going to do is clear and understood. You have to provide the materials if there are materials necessary. Uh, and it's good to go around and check on how they're doing uh, while the while the group work is happening. Uh, you have to have a time schedule, you know, give them enough time to do it, but not an excessive amount of time. And then this uh, point says not more than five members. I think five, in my experience, has been great. What do you think uh, about the size of the group? John Elvert, John Erickson, Benjamin, Dario? Uh, five. Um seems to be about right. I mean, it depends on how many, um, I guess, participants are taking 
part in you know this whole exercise but i also think it helps to have um somebody at each table that knows um the criteria or as as a kind of a guiding person that kind of guides the the table uh participants through the process mm. so maybe whether it's five i don't know maybe it could be a few more people but certainly not every if you have a short amount of time for for feedback um not all participants at the table are going to have have a chance to talk or have input if you have a lot of people sitting around the table. Yeah. Um, now, in a planetarium, there's not many planetariums that have tables. So we're talking about people sitting around on their seats. Uh, I th I think that's how that's how I'm envisioning it. And all oh, right. And in that situation, you really have contact with just the people adjacent to you. So, so there really is a limit to the size. Dario just put something in the chat. He says, can't the didactic organization have some interaction with the audience? Or would it fall into another category? Uh, I think I need to, uh, what my response to that is that all of the techniques that we're talking about here can all go into uh, a planetarium program, and they and some of them can even go into the same activity. So, uh, as I mentioned before, a didactic approach actually is essential to explain to people what what they're supposed to do or what or what they're what's possible for them to do. So I'm going to copy um, that small group talk or small group task, I guess, is would be the, I got that. I'm sure that I get the right terminology here. So small group task. I'm going to copy that into the chat, and if and if uh, you will take, let's take a minute or two, and. Uh, think of the advantage and disadvantage of the small group task uh, and share them in the chat window, which is our, which is our uh, recording. Benjamin, you won't be able to write anything, but you can certainly contribute vocally. What are the advantages and disadvantages of a small group task organization? By the way, Benjamin, are you able to see the video that we're seeing or are you just on a phone? I'm actually driving. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just listening. Okay. All right. Thanks. Don't let us distract your driving.
Okay, uh, John Erickson, you have about four advantages and one disadvantage. Uh, you want to explain any of that? Um, um, I think they're pretty clear. Um, I, uh, for Benjamin's sake, because he's just listening. Oh, okay. Um, well, science is a social activity and a sharing activity, so doing things in small groups is a little more about like how scientists get their work done. Um, each group and each person in the group is having a slightly different experience, which is good because it probably goes to the level they're at, but you don't, unless you can poll each person and get them to describe their experiences, you don't really know what each person is getting out of your program. Just okay. a sample. Okay, right great. And John, uh, John and I came up with a similar advantage. It's everybody, everybody can participate or everybody has a chance to put input in. Um, well, I think that, that John listed, um, you know, those elements that uh, were uh, obvious. And you know, once I read his, yeah. kind of thought, well, that's kind of like what I wanted to say. So. Yeah, okay. Um, I added a couple of disadvantages. Uh, one is that it may be hard to get everybody's attention back after they've been doing their task for a while. And then another disadvantage is if there are materials to go out, that can be a logistical problem in the planetarium. Mm -hmm. um, so that's good. Any other comments? Like Benjamin, do you have any comments on that? Um, regarding attention, if, if you're competing with their activity, then that's not necessarily a bad thing, depending on whether you have time and how much you're trying to get done. Right, right, if they're but absorbed, yeah. If they're absorbed and you can't pull them away, <laughs> excellent. Mm. Okay, great. Okay, well, uh, forging right ahead. There are, there are six organizations that we're gonna look at. The third one is the individual task organization. So this is an, instead of a group task, this is every individual in the planetarium having a, a task. And that's kind of like what we've been doing here now, is uh, everybody has a task to write down uh, the advantages and disadvantages of these, these things. So, I'm using this particular uh, type of organization for this online workshop right at the moment um, as an example. So, but let me, um, let me copy that in and let's see, let's see if there's any comments that in, for an individual task. Um, I'm gonna copy that into the chat and you can start uh, typing advantages and disadvantages if you like. Um, but while you're doing that, I'll finish up the, uh, any, well, let's see. Th there's an example given here. This is an example from a, a planetarium show that we, we developed at Lawrence Hall of Science a while back called the Variable Star Activity. And, uh, what it was, was everybody was looking at a group of stars. Five of them were labeled as their, um, their brightness, so br ranging from brightness one to five. And then there was another star, which was the variable star that we, we would control the brightness of. And the individual task was everybody had a piece of paper to record the brightness of the variable star over at various time intervals. So they were actually creating a graph of the uh, variable star. That was their individual task. So, um, I see that uh, in the chat, my, you know, I, I typed in individual task. It came out as, <laughs> 
as a little addendum to the disadvantage I gave before. Um, but this is actually a new topic, the individual task. So what are some of the advantages and disadvantages of that? Okay, we're getting a result from John Elvert. Uh, everybody's able to work at their own pace. Uh, but they're not able to share information or results with other participants. That's while they're doing their task, uh, unless you allow time at the end of the task for them to share their results. That, but that's a different organization pattern. Is that yeah, I guess uh, you didn't. Yeah, yeah, you didn't say that. Uh, yeah, there's. We don't know if um, the instructor, you know, allowed um, time for sharing of information or what the parameters were. Yeah. Well, that's an inter That's a very interesting point because usually a good activity may involve di uh, different combinations of organizational patterns. So like in our variable star activity, this is added in. The discussions will follow that activity to interpret what the light curve means. Um, so, but that is a different, uh, different organization other than the individual task. So John, you want to explain uh, the things that you got? Um, I guess I had only advantages with the assumption that it built to some kind of sharing or or group discussion at some point in the overall presentation um, so once the individual task is over it can be more like a small group or a whole task experience and even though it's an individual task there's flexibility for people to you know check each other's work compare notes okay um and if you are working on your own um there's some people who would rather not you know put out ideas um if they're not confident about them and if you have the opportunity to just observe and think for a while without the pressure of someone saying hey what do you think or all the time that could be an advantage for some people yeah like if somebody is particularly shy uh, they they may like working on their own 
Um, and Dario, just to give voice to Dario, uh, he he says that it that this this organization gives some responsibility to each one in the audience. So every, everybody takes some responsibility. Any other thoughts about this? Okay, I'm going to go on to now this one. I've I've thought about this. It actually is very similar to the small group, uh, except that it's not a task; it's a discussion. So I, you know, I'm not quite sure how to, uh, you know, characterize the difference. Uh, there, I think there are some big similarities between this one and the small group uh, work, small group task. But um, I'm going to go ahead and type that in here. But you know what? I'm not sure that, you know, this is a, I, actually, maybe what I'll do is go to a, a, a well, no. No, let's, if you have any thoughts about this, I mean, I stated one thought about it, but if you have anything to add, let's take a minute and uh, write down some things to add if you, if you have anything. This is in our individual task mode of contributing to the chat. Actually, is there, are there, um, is anybody working on something to contribute here? Or should we just go on to the next one? Okay, we have two, two more to go. So I, I am gonna go on to the next one. Uh, and this one actually let's use this Thank you for organization for this uh, particular um, this or the group meeting organization is where the entire group is discussing a problem. So I'm going to largely abandon the chat, but uh, um, we can just have a general group discussion about this, the group meeting organization where everybody is involved. There's a there's a problem which is posed to everybody, um, and everybody can contribute to the discussion. Okay, so it's problem centered, and anybody can talk. Uh, the example that's given here is that there's in the in our variable star activity, there can be it can be a whole group discussion, a group meeting organization that considers questions such as how many dips in brightness occur, when did those dips occur, and the, or for the variable star, and uh, what was the minimum brightness, okay? So that, that can be done in a, in a large group. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention, there, one of the newer types of organizations that I've run across is the pair share. You've probably heard of that, the pair share. But I consider that to be a, um, a combination of two types of, of uh, organizations that we've discussed here. The pair is actually a small group task, a small group discussion. And then the share is actually the, um, well, what is the the share part of it would be uh, in either informal discussion or 
or this group meeting organization, okay, if they're sharing to the whole group. Um, but anyway, does anybody have any comment, uh, whether it's in the chat or not, on this group meeting organization as far as what are the advantages and disadvantages? I am going to put that in the chat, to, at least as a title, just for the record. I guess there's some time efficiency. Um, individual issues get brought to the whole group right away without the filter of going through a a small group session or a paired session the disadvantage is it's hard to manage in the dark sometime Um. Yeah, and shy, and if people are shy, they're not going to speak up. That's another disadvantage. Benjamin, I see your face now. Are you uh, not driving anymore? Oh, you're. You're still, you're muted, but. Uh... If you're in the dark, then, uh, I mean, if there's any, um, I guess, participation involved as far as recording um, anything, or, or depending on, on the discussion, uh, I mean, you have nothing to, um, to show any feedback from them. Okay. Yeah, it's uh, planetarium has many disadvantages <laughs> over classroom in the in that it's dark and it has this funny shape and uh, although the shape can be an advantage as far as the feeling of being a group. A lot, uh, you know, a whole group actually. Well, it might be also be difficult for the instructor to call on individual participants as well. Um, yeah, depending on the brightness level, uh, um, you know, the raising of hands. Um, I don't know, reluctance of speaking up. Um, Okay. Okay, I think uh, any other last comments before we uh, go on to the last organizational, which is, oh, somebody just drew, somebody's is drawing on the uh, screen share. Is that is that for real? I see it. I don't know what it is. Yeah, so do I. I it just came on. That's strange, and it doesn't scrub it. I mean, it's not. It's uh, <laughs> okay. However, that happened. I'll be curious to find out. Hope it's not permanent. <laughs> yeah, I hope it's not permanent on my computer screen. <laughs> well, wait a minute. It is. Uh, if I'm moving stuff around, it's staying in the same place. That's a very odd. Have we been hacked by some uh, vandal? Is it uh, is it graffiti 
and some graffiti or computer. This is really strange. I'm going to stop share and see if that uh, makes it makes it uh, go away. Did it go away? We can't see. Uh, I think so. Okay, now I'm going to share again and see if it's still there. Oh, it's not. I think I online. think it was. It, well, thank goodness it was temporary. So anyway, this last pattern is called Socratic, and that's where the it's not the problem is not at the center. It's the instructor that's at the center, and is guiding things, with usually with questions of individual uh, audience members. Okay, so that's as Socrates did. This is Socrates' technique. Um, in the case of our variable star activity, these are some questions that might might be asked. What might have caused the dips in brightness? Uh, and if there's, you know, taking possibilities, there can be a discussion of the possibilities of what's causing drops in brightness on the variable star uh, light curve. So, um, any comments about that one? Let's let's keep it in the uh, whole group discussion mode. Well, this one reminds me of the program you just saw. It was a program about the moon, and there's a time when we're on the moon, and we flash up some questions in an Earth day. What will we see? Will Earth move? Will the sun move? Will um, and then what will happen in a month? And I found it very tricky to get done in a short to get people to explain their thinking in a short time in the planetarium. Maybe because it's a tricky idea that the moon is in sync with the Earth's rotation and orbit. Mm. Um, but that's something that's established earlier in the show and yeah, yeah I can I, I'm just thinking about what it reminds me of yeah Benjamin uh, put something into the chat I'm not sure if Benjamin can unmute and explain what he wrote well just that if you're going to do a Socratic kind of guided discussion uh, as part of your activity then you can make sure you cover all the things you intend by actually asking a question about them, since you're guiding them through a uh, series of questions. Uh, so the guided part of it is uh, is an advantage. I think, yeah. yeah. Of course, those people who are advocates of chaos <laughs> say that that's a disadvantage. <laughs> There's probably a better word than chaos for that. Organized chaos. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what? I'm gonna. I, I think everybody has a good uh, a good grasp of it. Let's look at a few examples and see, just as an exercise, see if we can identify which of these things is which type of organization. Okay. So here are some examples. Okay, of what the instructor is trying to trying to get started. Okay, so the first example is overhead you see a photo of the moon taken by Apollo astronauts. What do you notice about these circular features and what shapes have you seen on Earth? Or what shapes like these have you seen on Earth? What what organization pattern does that sound like? Clouds. What? Clouds. Clouds. Uh, oh, a photo of the moon. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. Crater. What, uh, yeah, what would the instructor be trying? Well, you know, what would be the most uh, likely organizational pattern to deal with these questions? It sounds like, is that a Socratic one? Perhaps. Um, 
but it also could be an individual one as well uh -huh. because once you ask the question individuals could be uh depending on how you're running the activity yeah okay that sounds good so yeah let's go let's let's uh, look at the second one um now i'll show you some spectacular photographs of the moon and explain us about how old the moon is and how it was probably formed. What uh, organization pattern is that? Didactic. Yeah, that sounds like that to me too. Okay. Is everybody, let's see. Well, this lamp will represent the sun. I want each of you to stand up, turn around, so the sun appears to rise and set for you. What is that type of organization? So everybody's standing up, <laughs> turning around, trying to get the sun to rise and set. That individual task? I don't know if it's an individual task or whole group. You've you've all you're all sharing the sun. But it still seems more individual. Yeah. Yeah, I think that it could lead to a whole group discussion, but this particular thing is an individual task, I would I would think. So working together in groups of three, hey, there's a hint. Pick out a group of stars and make up a story about some animal or person represented by those stars. What's that? You know what? Maybe I'm not showing the. Uh, this is the. These are the types to choose from. Oh, that's helpful. Yeah. That's helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Although with the one you just gave, you pointed out the obvious hint which is small group small group yeah. and i have a bus to catch thank you very much i'll say okay. goodbye all right thanks but thanks john see you bye thanks, john you. so here's a uh, another one since many of you seem concerned with tremendous cost of the viking mission let's take five minutes to discuss whether or not the mission was worth the cost who would like to express an opinion first? So which of these uh, organization patterns would that be? Does that seem like a group meeting? I'm going to put. Uh, yeah, that would be the best one, I think. Okay. And then yeah, it's, one, it's one last. Consider a problem. Uh, what, John, did you say something? Yeah, I was just wondering if that was a problem. Oh, a problem. So, uh, it, it is the tremendous cost of the Viking mission a problem? Okay. So, for the group meeting, that's the central problem. Is that Does that make sense? Yeah. I just. If it is a problem, then that's group meeting. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It does seem to be posed as a problem. Um, and then one more. Uh, please feel free to come up to the console at the end of the program and ask whatever questions you like. Hmm. Which of these six things would that be? Informal discussion. Okay. So. Could be informal discussion. Informal discussion is structured, if you look at the diagram, in small groups with the instructor. And the instructors included talking to one student. So yes, it could easily be a, a an informal discussion. In fact, that may be the most appropriate. Okay, 
Well, you know what? I think uh, we've reached the end of the official workshop here. Uh, any, I just will call for any final comments or questions from people about anything, really, about this workshop or about this whole. I'm curious about uh, the the whole idea of having an online workshop. Now we had only four or five people in this workshop, so it was a small group. But uh, yeah. I'm very yeah. interested in how online workshops happen. Yeah, for me personally, it's uh, I like the review. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, this is nice. Uh, I think if you had more people, uh, you'd have more conversation and uh, maybe more input, uh, more advantages, disadvantages. But um, yeah, I think these workshops are worthwhile. I just don't understand uh, why we don't have more people signing on. Yeah, I uh, Sharon Shanks was at one of them. She's she said that it's a uh, that I've done a terrible job of publicizing them, <laughs> which uh, which must be true. That must be one of the factors. A possible factor. I mean, I saw the announcement on the uh, Domel, so that's pretty good publishing for our community. Yeah, that well, that's about all I do to pub to uh, publicize is. Yeah. The email goes out to the PPA email list and to Domel. So Benjamin, you didn't get the PPA email then. Um, I may have, no. but but I saw the Domel more recently, which okay. was a reminder. Okay. Yeah, we might need to check your uh, to see if you know. No, I think I'm. I think I'm getting them. Okay. Good. Good. I think. Uh, there may have been a problem with uh, I'm, I'm always in, into checking uh, if our PPA email list is working right. Yeah. With nope. Email. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah, I get the I get the uh, PPA email. Okay. Great. Yeah, I actually did an exhaustive test of that. I sent out individual messages to each individual person separately from the Google group. The email list is actually a Google group. Uh, just to see if their systems were rejecting the Google group for some reason. And there were some where it was rejected. Uh, try to correct that problem. So uh, I guess I have one last comment about this. The online, the main problem I see with an online workshop is that if, you, if we had a large number of people, and we really wanted to break up into small groups. I don't see how that could happen, really. Um, I've heard rumors, or I've heard of Zoom having uh, something that they call Zoom rooms. Mm. That's what it's called. Where I would assume that that's where you can have subgroups or smaller groups from a larger meeting, but. I would have to explore that a little bit more. And it might cost more, too. OK, well, you know what? I think this has overall been a successful workshop, uh, even though it's been um, meagerly attended. Uh, <laughs> I'm but, glad uh, I could attend, although I'll be at late. Yeah, well. Uh, thanks for uh, for joining in, even in your car. I'm glad you didn't crash while you were doing that. No, no. <laughs> um, and I'd like to thank everybody for coming to this session. Uh, yeah, well, thanks. Thanks for hosting, Alan. Okay, I'm gonna stop my share. I'm gonna stop the recording. And uh, uh, how do I stop the recording? Oh, there it is. It was hidden. <laughs>